Good everyone, I hope you're having an amazing day. Um, so today I'll be talking about the case management and how to automate it. Now, uh, before I dive into the case management and the demonstration, I just wanted to you guys to take a step back and try to understand why do we need to automate a case management uh, in a process in Salesforce, right? So for instance, um, let's say you are a customer, okay? Uh, uh, and you are buying a product. So, for instance, you wanted to buy, say, 50 uh, cans of beer, okay, from a brewery, and that brewery you sell, for, okay? And say, you know, after you bought a beer and you realize that, you know, 10 beers are faulty, I mean, it tastes a bit strange, maybe it's a bit out of date, and the lager has a bit, you know, uh, pungent or like a, you know, uh, a bit weird taste, right? So you decide to, um, you know, contact them and send an email, right? And, you know, you, let's say you contacted them on Monday, right? And you waited till Wednesday, Thursday, and you got really annoyed and you called them back, right? Um, and then you, you know, ask them, hey, I emailed you on Monday. And just to let you guys know that the, the 10 cans were faulty. Can you send us a placement or, or can you have a look at it to, to let us know what's going on? And, you know, the agent who picks up the call say, hey, oh, sorry for the, you know, delay, blah, 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 and we'll get back to you. And again, you know, they never get back to you. And imagine the kind of frustration that, right, you know, as a user, you go through, you say, hey, why the heck are you even buying a product from this uh, brewery when they don't even have an audacity to, you know, get back to, you know, me? to just to understand what's going on, to understand my concern, right? That's where, you know, the case management in Salesforce plays a very important role. It kind of uh, acts as a layer to remove the frustration of a user, okay? So, you know, and when we talk about the case, it's just not only about, you know, creating a user, creating a case and forgetting about it, right? There are a lot of things that goes behind the scene just to have a effective case management solution in place, okay? The first thing I just wanted to mention about the queues, okay, which plays a very important role. Sounds very uh, simple, uh, but yet very powerful, right? The queues are more like um, it's it's created to prioritize your support team workload, right? By creating a list uh, from which, you know, any specific uh, support agent can, you know, look into it to solve certain types of cases, right? Um, so, for instance, you might have a case uh, which been which has an origin, say, as an uh, email. So that goes to a email queue, right? So the all the users, uh, you know, agents who've been to a part of queue can pick up, and you know, any of them can pick up and look at the case. Uh, then we have something called assignment rule, which automatically assigns that incoming case to the queue. Let's say, you know, user created a uh, case which says the origin as an email, it should route it to a email queue, right? Sounds simple, right? Then you have an escalation rules. So escalation rules are pretty handy. Escalation rules comes into pictures. Say like like I gave you an example, right? A guy has to wait, uh, you know, until Thursday to figure out what's going on with the case, right? So that's where you can, you know, uh, configure an escalation rules. Let's say if a case exceeds. If a case uh, sits in uh, in a queue without being attended by anyone, say for two days, it get routed to uh, or get escalated to the manager. You know, so that's a case uh, escalation, and it's a very powerful feature. Uh, then you have something called auto response rules, right? Which automatically send out you know personalized email response. So for that, you need to have a template, and templates will decide you know how your email should be you know sent out to the customer. So I'm not getting into the email template part today, but I just wanted to touch upon an important aspect, right? Auto response rules. It's a very powerful option, right? Imagine you might have got you know when you apply for a job sometimes, right? Certain companies will say, hey, thank you for your application, uh, blah blah blah. We'll get back to you, right? So they customize the template. So similar kind of experience you can give or you can even give a better experience, right? So it just depends upon how good you want to, uh, you know, give, how good of an experience you wanted to give to your customer, okay? So the first thing first, so I logged into my work. As usual, I recommend that you guys please do a hands-on as you listen to this tutorial or video, whatever you call. Um, so first of all, what we're going to do, we'll go to and create a queue, okay? So our main objective 
um, is to create a email queue. Okay, so uh, you go to, to uh, the support option, so you can go to the Gearcog icon and it takes you to the support. Okay, so you just look for queue. Um, let's go for queues, and so you go, go to new and say email queue. Okay, uh, email queue, right? Um, Q email, you just put whatever you want. Just for now, I just put, just put the meaningful, you know, email of the queue, right? But for now, I'll just put the test, right? And if you wanted to send an email to the members, you can do that as well. For now, I won't do that. And what objects we are dealing with? We are specifically dealing with the cases, right? Uh, we're not dealing with any anything else. So just select this case here. And the queue members, okay? So, so what I'll do, I will put, you know, myself as a queue member for now. Uh, okay, let's for the sake of argument just put the security user. But in general, org, right? In a in a real time org, you will have lots of users. So for now, just for the sake of demo, this is what I'm going to do, right? Um, so queues is created, email queue, pretty fantastic, right? So now the queue has been created. Um, so let's look at the case. So I'm just going to go to the ser uh, service uh, app, and we're going to look at the the case so when we look at the case so you know if you go to this drop down you can see uh, email queue but right now you have no data here right because we haven't created a case okay so what we do we create a uh, assignment rules okay so assignment rules will ensure that when the user creates a, ca a case uh, which has an origin email it will route it to this specific queue okay sounds simple right so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to the uh, setup here. And so I will look for uh, assignment, right? And <clears throat> sorry, the case, assignment rules. And so look for the case assignment rules under setup. And I'm just going to go new. And I'm just going to do email um, Q. Right, the so smart is an active. I'm gonna save. <clears throat> okay, um, so I'll go to the email queue again, and I will have to add the rule entries, right? Because right now it's just a queue, uh, just an empty assignment rule. Um, you know, because we haven't specified any rules, right? So the rules should be like a case origin should be of an email type. So we're gonna go to new. I'll put the sort order one. And so we'll say the case origin equals um, uh, email. Pretty simple, right? So, and so what, what exactly you want to happen when you know a case of origin email get triggered? So you should assign that to a queue, right? So the one which you have created. Um, so we assign that to email queue. And if you have an email template, I mean, like I said, I'm not dealing with the template for now. Just pick and choose any template. Um, and forget about the other stuff for now. Just say, okay. So we are, we are dealing with the simplest scenario for now, okay. Um, so that's pretty much it. <laughs> and it's active. So, you know, assignment rule is set in place, okay. So what we do, uh, we're just going to create a, <clears throat> a case now. So we're just going to go to this, okay. We're going to go to this here. I'm going to case here. I'm just going to refresh the, the screen. Um, and so I'm going to create a new um, uh, case here. And I will say, okay, contact. I'll say the rules, whatever. Gonzalez. Um, the type, I will say, is structural. You know, sorry, I don't have the type as you know, beers. Just for the sake of argument, just assume that I'm just creating a simple case, right? Um, <clears throat> the status, leave as... As such, priority, we don't care, and I just don't care. I just subject as a test, blah, blah, you know, test, you know, until comes blah, blah, right? Don't care about that for now. Uh, case origin, um, you just have something called, um, uh, what's that called? Uh, email, because we are after email, right? Now, there's an option called assign using active case assignment rules, okay? So tick that one. And save. Okay. Now, what happens? Let's go to the cases here. 
and go to that email queue voila you have a case assigned to the right queue right so this is powerful okay so you have an email team sitting i mean you have a team sitting who only monitors say uh the case which whose origin is an email it jumps in right here and just they can have a look at their queue pretty handy pretty powerful you will not muck up okay now let's say i mean for whatever reason the case it's here for you know thousands of years you know just for the sake of technology uh it needs to get us clear right so what happens you just go back to uh the setup again and so we'll say case escalation okay um hopefully that's the one i oh, know not that one sorry um okay um, so you just try to type escalation here, right? It's under service escalation rules. Um, so you go here and I'm just going to create new, right? Um, I'll just say email queue. Okay. And I'll just mark it as an active and I'll save. And I will go to the email queue again, rule entries. Obviously you need to have a rule entries, right? So I'll just put this order or one, um, the case origin as usual. Um, I'm just going to say equal to uh, email and I'll insert that uh, use the business hour I just keep everything is uh, the case is the same um, <clears throat> so so this is fine so these are the options you have um, you can ignore the business hours or you can set the business hours if you want if you have but or you can use the business hour default options it's pretty all right um, uh, again, it depends on your business requirement, but for now, I'll just keep it as the use business hours specified on the case. Um, and then I'll specify how escalation times are set. Um, so either you can do when the case is created or when the case is created and disable after the case is first modified. So, um, and based on the last modification time. So, um, I for now, this is when the case is created, but obviously the case has been untouched, right? So, that's where I wanted to get this to escalate it. So I'll keep it as um, case is created. Um, so I'll just keep save. Okay, so that's done. Now escalation action. Okay. Uh, now age over. So the number of hours after which a case should be escalated. So I'll just say after 30 minutes, just for the sake of argument. Or sometimes you can say, you know, whatever you want it. So auto reassign case. So for that, you know, we might need to... I will assign it to user. So let's say assign it to me, um, you know, and I want a template notification template right now. I don't have, so you can also put it to a queue. So what happens is right. So you can uh, put it to a separate queue called escalation queue. You know, that works as well because maybe two, three members um, who will look at actively monitor the queue, like three, four managers or, you know, senior guys who are you call, right. Or if you've got none, you can assign to a user, right. So it normally is a good practice to assign to queue, in my opinion, because what if the person leaves, right? So just for the sake of argument, just keep it to, yeah. Um, if you wanted to notify the case owner, you can do that, and you can you can do save. Okay, so that's how the escalation works. Uh, I can't demonstrate it, unfortunately, at this stage, but uh, this is how you normally create an escalation. Um, and, and the escalation is very powerful feature right because obviously you don't want the case to be sitting um in the queue for you know thousands of years and no one touches it right and adds more frustration uh to your customers which is not a great way to deliver a solution right so and that is um that's another one and now we can look at the case auto response so sometimes what happens, right? Like I said, you can create an auto response rule. So when the case is created, hey, thank you for your case, blah, blah, blah. We'll get back to you, right? So you might have a default template. So the way to do that, so you go to the, you know, this um, setup and look for case auto, auto response rule. So this is one under service, okay? If you, if you don't want it to type it, you can go to the you know, service and find it out, right? So it can say email queue and and I'm just gonna do active, I'm just gonna do save. Um, and I'm just gonna do email queue and the rule entries. Yeah. So order one. Uh, 
criteria met and the case origin um, so equals to email right pretty fantastic uh, the name I will say uh, Jack uh, Daniels yeah. uh, right. um, so my apologies if you heard that motorbike it's just my neighbor uh, sorry about that Jack Daniels at uh, jacktrade.com just dumb, some dummy right so email template just speaking like I said you know you need to have a template in place customized template uh, for now I don't worry about it you just uh, you know just use the existing one I just don't care at this stage so okay so what is this case I don't know Jack Daniels okay oh, man. Uh, just probably gmail.com all right okay what I'll do I'll just put my damn email that's fine okay and that's great and I save it okay that worked so that's pretty cool so this is how you generate an auto response rule so when the case get created um, it sends out an email it's pretty pretty simple right so so yeah I mean this is how you can automate your you know the case uh, management you know order auto, auto, uh, automation uh, of the case management and I believe it's 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 very important uh, functionality offered by the Salesforce because um, you obviously have to keep the customer um, you know, service into consideration right because you know what differentiate two products uh, from one another if if both products offer the same functionality is a service the company offers right if you if, let's say if I'm buying say uh, a beer from a brewery a or and and the same you know similar tasting beer from brewery B if the brewery beer has a better service I'll obviously go to brewery B right I will not you know bother with the brewery a right so the service uh, you offer to a customer will make or break uh, your customer level agreement, right? I mean, if I'm a customer, if I pay, uh, you know, for a service, I expect at least a decent amount of support I receive in a decent amount of time. It shouldn't be that I should be waiting for, let's say, uh, two weeks to even say get a response to say, hey, we are looking into it. That's just not good enough in today's time, right? So, so that's why you know when you when you play with these tools, right? You have to keep the customer um, into consideration right how good of a customer experience you wanted to offer right so yeah that's pretty much what i wanted to uh talk about in this episode i hope you guys have an amazing uh evening take care adios